Welcome back to the vlog. If you're new here, my name is Vin and I document my journey building a business in my 20s. And today we're spending the day with the CEO of a billion dollar tech company. This is one of the most random stories ever of how this actually came to be. A few months ago, I randomly put out a vlog and it only got like 1800 views on YouTube. I got a random DM from somebody named Alina Vandenberg, who's the CEO of Chili Piper. She reached out to me and she said, hey, I would love for you to come spend the day with me to see what it's like to be a CEO of a billion dollar tech company. And at first I was like, okay, that's a really random request. But then I thought how cool it would be to actually see the behind the scenes of what a high performer looks like running a massive tech company. And so I said, yes. And I think like one of the biggest lessons that I learned in life, whenever something feels odd in the beginning, it's always the right decision to say yes. So I woke up at 5 a.m. today, we're headed into Brooklyn to meet with Alina. And the goal is to have full transparency into how a CEO of a tech company runs their day. And she is also a mother, so we're meeting her early at her place so she can take her kids to school. I said, whatever you do in a day, I will tag along. So that does involve like <laughs> feeding your kids breakfast and taking them to school. So she actually got me conference passes to the SAS Open, which is a really cool tech event in New York City that I've never been to. She's also speaking at that event. And later tonight, I am accompanying her to a really cool dinner with a bunch of other CEOs of tech companies, which is gonna be great for me as someone that's very early in my career, just to get exposure to these type of individuals. And one of the biggest lessons that you could take from this is you never know who's watching your content. Even if you have a few hundred views, a few thousand views on a video, you just never know who's watching. And in this case, it could be a CEO of a billion dollar tech company. I just got to Alina's place and I'm in the elevator heading upstairs. Morning. Hey. <laughs> Today is the first day of the school year for Alina's kids. And both Alina and her husband, Nicola, are speaking at the SAS Open event today. So they had a busy morning to say the least. I watched Alina feed her son's breakfast, prep and pack their lunches, and get them dressed and out the door. And when Alina asked me to spend the entire day with her, she wasn't kidding. As a female founder, this is the duality of being an entrepreneur and a mother. <gasps> so that's what the uh, average morning looks like? Uh, no, much more chaotic. Much more chaotic? Yeah. <laughs> I'm always late. They haven't eaten their breakfast. Before we started the Chili Piper, it was like 2015, I think, 2016, we would walk by this building. And um, I thought that was a, this is the most beautiful uh, building that uh, I've ever seen. It has this amazing view and these high ceilings. I love high ceilings. Mm -hmm. And um, I went to the concierge downstairs and I uh, asked for a price list. And when I saw the prices, I thought, this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> People could pay this kind of money. Uh, I would never be able to afford it. Uh, but maybe I can dream about it. So I put it in my, I took the brochure from the real estate broker. And I put it in my uh, shitty uh, desk that I had at that time. Mm. And every morning I would look at it. It's like maybe one day, maybe one day. I had it there for years on my desk. So when I got uh, this apartment, I couldn't believe my luck. I just couldn't believe my luck. You believe in manifestation? <sighs> More burning desire. <laughs> yep. I'm a little bit nervous because I have done zero reversal of my slides and I have put the slides together and I've not looked at them in a long time. So is that what you're reviewing right now? No. <laughs> How do you balance being a mom and a CEO? I don't think I do it. <laughs> I don't think I try to balance. Everything is just intertwined. The boys, they come to my work, they come into my Zoom, um, and they think that they go to school so that they can work because they don't see work as a typical how we saw it as children we were seeing our parents struggling whereas me at work i don't struggle i have fun so they uh they think school is just so that you can have fun at work afterwards <laughs> what was it like growing up in romania i uh, was born when there was still communism there everything that you do is monitored so we would have our house bugged like most people would have their house bugged and you'd always have neighbors who would be ready to tell on you if you'd say anything bad about the regime or about the government or I remember being very young and learning that it's everybody's out there to get you um, because for instance I had a neighbor that was um, his job was to work for the secret police and to punish people that were um, 
saying negative things. And when he would get drunk, he would tell us stories of how he would punish them. So some of them would get uh, injured, some of them would get into prison, but a lot of them would also get murdered. And um, I actually had a, somebody who took care of me who was very dear to me, murdered by this guy. Yeah. Um, and it was obviously beyond scary and horror to experience that, but it has made me appreciate so much more being here in US and having the freedom of speaking my mind out. Yeah. Did you always know you wanted to be an entrepreneur? Always as a child growing up, I had this sign and my mom remembers it very well on my door that said, uh, in Romanian, I'm going to say director general, which means translated literally means general director, but in Romania, that meant like the CEO. So I always had this dream of uh, being the CEO. And the reason why I had this, this desire to be one is because I would see everybody in my neighborhood and my parents struggle so much at work. And I felt it was the fault of their bosses, of the management, of the companies that they worked in, that they had to experience so much pain and be paid such meager salaries where they could barely survive. We got to the event a little before nine and instantly Alina was recognized. I felt like I was walking around with the president with how many people stopped by to say hi. This just shows how much effort she puts into networking and meeting with other executives within the space. And she even managed to squeeze in some content before the event kicked off. I find it sad that certain companies um, go and police their employees on their personal brand on LinkedIn or on X. I saw someone getting fired for posting some TikTok videos about their company. It makes absolutely no sense because the company benefits. Um, they might be afraid that they might not put things in the best light, but that's what people crave is authenticity. They crave to hear about stories uh, behind the brand. And these days, the authentic stories are the ones that are winning. So I feel sad for companies that don't understand that. Elena's friend, Irina, who's the CEO of Hootsuite, kicked off the event with her presentation on different buying trends from Gen Z. Then Alina took the stage. She shared Chili Piper's strategy and pivots they made on their journey to 50 million in revenue. You've also may have noticed Alina's pink pants. She purposely wore these pants to stand out and break the mold how female founders are supposed to act, talk, and dress. Now, what I didn't mention is that Alina co-founded Chili Piper with her husband, Nicola who also seemed to have gotten the cool pants memo, which nobody told me about. Nicola took the stage while Alina and her son watched from the crowd. Her son was already back from school and they couldn't get a sitter, so they made the best out of their situation. Plus, something tells me their son is a future entrepreneur. Seems to be in their blood. So I, I'm the technical co-founder and I fitted when I started the company very much the criteria of a technical co-founder in that I was super shy avoid eye contact at all costs yeah don't talk to anyone and um, i would ask my marketing team do not put me on stage <laughs> don't don't have me speak to any journalists and uh, um, that has changed in the past three years or so where i realized that my voice can make a difference and putting myself out there can amplify causes that i care about <laughs> And I got a lot more courage to just be more present with the outside world. And it took a lot of coaches and <laughs> a lot of work. But now I consider myself an extrovert, even though this can be exhausting because there's so many people and I have to talk to so many people, but um, it's very rewarding. So now I would say that I'm an extrovert. Yeah. People that are not normally extroverted have to try extra hard to be extroverted. It's a skill that you learn. Introverts get energy from like being by themselves. Extroverts get energy by being from other people. And so I definitely feel like I'm more extro introverted because I need to like recharge after I'm with a bunch of people afterwards. It's good to see you. Then Joey, nice to meet you. Hi, Joey. We took a break from the event to grab some lunch with the Chili Piper team. After I walked back, stopped at Ground Zero. Since 9-11 is right around the corner, they had the fountains on, which was really powerful. Hey. We just got back from lunch and I'm doing some work here. So I've been spending the day with dozens of tech founders and I was actually just taking some notes on some interesting things that I observed. Mostly three things that I wanna share with you guys. The first thing I learned was that successful entrepreneurs are genuinely curious people. And you would think like the more successful you are, the less you wanna hear from other people. You, you may think that you know it all, but that is the complete opposite of from what I found here at this conference. 
the entrepreneurs that are most successful are the most curious people. And even someone like me who's just beginning my journey into my career, talking to folks that have been in the industry two decades, they're asking me questions about my industry and you know what Gen Zs are doing and how Gen Zs are like actually making purchasing decisions. So they're genuinely curious I, and I, they give off the vibe that they can learn something from anybody, which is super inspiring. So one tip to be a successful entrepreneur is to always be learning and be open to new perspectives. The second thing I learned is there's not just one way to run a business. From spending the day with Alina, and her husband, I learned they did everything completely opposite. First off, they're a husband and wife co-founders. Most people say, don't get into business with family, don't get into business with your partner. They ignored that. The other thing they did was, they were actually a remote first company before the pandemic. So before all the companies actually went remote, Chili Piper was a fully remote company and they were ahead of their time. They hire talent from over 40 different countries from all over the world and they throw like literal parties once a year in different countries around the world. They just got back from Iceland this past year. Two years ago, they went to Morocco. And this year coming up, they're going to Croatia for a giant kickoff, basically party for their employees. Um, Alina, Alina mentioned that there's no point of doing business if you can't have fun. And that really bleeds over into their business. And then the other thing is like, they also don't follow the typical, you know, old white guy in a suit type of business, right? Alina is from Romania, Nicola is from France. They dress super cool. They're wearing bright clothes. They're wearing, you know, baggy jeans with bedazzles on them. And they really just like break the mold for traditional business. When people zig, you need to zag. Okay, I'm currently on my way over to the uh, dinner tonight, which is with a bunch of CEOs of some tech companies. I'll definitely be the odd man out, but one of the most important things I learned from this is having a skill that gets you into rooms that you don't belong in. And that's definitely the theme of tonight. Now, this was the most interesting part of the night. I somehow got a seat at the table of an exclusive dinner with some tech executives at Hawksmoor. Now, I, I couldn't film for obvious reasons. Nobody wants a camera in front of them as they're scarfing food down or having like a private dinner conversation. So I will update you in a bit. So we uh, got together at 7 a.m. <laughs> It's been, um, it felt like 10 days into one, something like that. I feel super grateful that I was able to be surrounded by so many people that were um, choke of wisdom and everybody has like their own different zone of genius and you always learn a little bit. Um, and as you were saying earlier, everybody's very curious and everybody wants to learn. Um, and those are the kind of things that I feel so driven to grow this company even further because I feel like the more further I go along, the better my chances to be surrounded by smart people. And those is, that's the kind of privilege that you cannot get by any other means other than building these kind of companies. And it's so much fun, so much fun. All right, yesterday was a crazy day. And I'll get into the recap of the day, but I need to fill you guys in on this dinner that I went to. Alina brought me to this dinner where there was about like 10 or 15 tech executives of really big tech companies. Like there was a CEO of a tech company that did over 300 million in revenue. There were some companies that did 50 million in revenue. And I obviously will keep everybody anonymous for obvious reasons, but I definitely was the oddball out. I was the youngest, obviously not a CEO of a tech company and by far not as accomplished as the people in the room. And I've never been to one of these like tech executive dinners and I always hear people talk about them online and uh, it was so interesting to be just a fly on the wall for this event. And I took down some notes that I wanna share with you guys, again, keeping everything anonymous, but whenever I go out to dinner with my friends, it's usually we, you invite a bunch of people, they're sitting at a table, but then you kind of like have side conversations. You talk to the person to the left of you, you talk to the person to the right of you. You might get up and like talk to someone else across the table. In this dinner, I don't know if this is normal or not, but like literally one person pretty much spoke at a time and the one person speaking owned the table for that time. And so we did introductions, shared who you are and one thing you're interested in. And then other people would ask that person questions and there was like this kind of like kind of debate style or like open discussion. And like I said, one person would speak at a time. And I thought that was just like a really, really interesting. Another thing I noticed is it almost felt like the weirder your interests were or how deeply you were interested in a certain topic, the more impressive you were. Like being weird or having different interests was celebrated. And I thought that was really interesting and I actually appreciated that. The other thing I noticed is that a lot of these tech founders are like super into biohacking, which I've heard is the case, but I didn't really understand how true of a statement that was. 
I don't think tech founders are like trying to biohack to like live forever, like Brian Johnson. I think most of these tech founders are extremely busy. They deal with high stress and you basically have to perform at a really, really high level. And that's basically what I think that they're optimizing for. Lots of people were focused on sleep. You know, who has wearable tech that tells you how much you sleep or the food you have and how that affects your sleep. Uh, some people got sleep coaches. Some people did silent retreats that were 10 days long. So they're doing all these things to like one, optimize their health and performance and two, like unlock, I would say new parts of their brain to, to help solve problems. So, so that was really interesting and probably a really obvious observation, but I couldn't help but think how smart everybody was in the room and not just about the technologies they're building. Obviously they're experts in that field, but they had a lot of expertise in many different topics. And when they had these discussions that I mentioned earlier, the whole group can basically kind of go deep on each of these topics. And even if someone else didn't know about a topic, they were extremely curious to learn more about that topic, especially if other folks in the room knew what that was. So that was a really interesting thing that I took back that I hope I can kind of be better in of understanding different parts of different industries. And even if it's something that's completely new to me, being curious to find out more about it and why someone else may be interested in it. I came back with like so many notes, so many recommendations for books. It was such a unique experience. And again, I am not supposed to be in that room, but having a skill set like creating video content, telling stories, any skill set that you have can get you into the rooms with the right people. And so I strongly stand by that. And it was an incredible day, long day. I woke up at 5 a.m. and didn't get home till midnight. I also just get back to the parking garage where my car was in Brooklyn. And after a long night, spending the entire day on my feet and working and networking, my car battery dies. So now my car is stuck in the parking garage and I'm there for like 30 minutes. Luckily, the garage attendants were able to help me out and jump the car. That way I can get home. But it was just a really, really long night. But it was well worth it. Hopefully I could do more videos like this where I can kind of have a behind the scenes of a successful entrepreneur or somebody in tech. I think that could be a really interesting video format. So if you enjoyed this video, comment below and I'll try to do more videos like this. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.